We'd like to welcome you to BeMoreNews.com, the news before the news, where we uncover the truth here on 116th Street in Harlem. And you were talking about black businesses amidst regentr or gentrification. Oh, no question. If you figure that every community needs to have a commerce area, and so as these large developments are coming up in Baltimore, in D.C., wherever, we as a community, African American businesses, should start thinking about what type of retail walk-in business or services can you put inside those buildings on the first floor. That's it? That's, and it's bottom line, but we should be also developing that strategy. You need dry cleaners, you need grocery stores, coffee shops. Well, aren't Here these the very same stores. businesses that we left the city to move to the county? We had them and we sold them so we could live elsewhere. And so now you have all these people with money who are coming back to the city. Black people, white people, Asian well, people. Well, I think that there is an awful lot of white people that are coming. There are an awful lot of Asians and anybody who's looking for new developed properties that are affordable. Some of those properties are running $150,000 to $190,000 and above. So you can get a great property in a community that's going to turn over that's going to have commerce centers throughout the area. And we should be looking at those commerce centers as opportunities for businesses in our community. And you used to own a business here in Harlem? Yes, I used to have an art gallery. Not Saj, far from here? On 124th and St. Nicholas. Okay, and any thoughts in retrospect? In retrospect, I probably should have gone in with more capital, done a lot more research and understanding gentrification because I just couldn't afford to stay there anymore. Well, isn't that what's happening in Baltimore City? I mean, water bills, my God. Well, uh, if you can't pay a water <laughs> bill, they're gonna, you're gonna leave, you're gonna have to leave Baltimore. Well, I think that also we need to start working together as a community and using a lot of the, be it MDDC, be it Black Chamber of Commerce, be it um, whatever. Any organization that has commerce applied to it should be partnering and develop stra developing strategies to make certain that there's a sustainability plan involved as well and that we thoroughly understand what this gentrification, gentrification means to our community. Well, let me ask you this. With Maryland having more black elected officials than ever before in history, I think 44 members in the state, uh, the Maryland General Assembly compared with 11 members back in the days of Clarence Mitchell III, do the black elected officials get it? Well, whether they do or not, it's our responsibility to make certain that they do. We're but the they are part of these there. changes. I mean, do you and sense we, that they understand I, what's going on? I think that there are quite a few of them who do understand, but I think also that we need to make it a priority for our community and then articulate that priority to our elected officials. And until we make it important, they're going to take what is a priority as they see fit and as the community tells them. So our responsibility is to grow and develop our community. Our responsibility is to educate our community. Good deal. Keep watching vmorenews.com, the news before the news where we uncover the truth.